Do not take for granted this opportunity to speak to you in Glasgow as you discuss the fate of the world and the fate of small island states, including those in the beautiful Pacific region. Climate change and sea level rise are deadly and existential threats to Tuvalu and low-lying atoll countries. We are sinking, but so is everyone else. And no matter if we feel the impacts today, like in Tuvalu, or in a hundred years, we will all still feel the dire effects of this global crisis one day. In Tuvalu, our islands are sacred to us. They contain the mana of our people. They were the home of our ancestors. They are the home of our people today. And we want them to remain the home of our people into the future. This is why this call to you from Tuvalu is not just a political statement. It is a call that reverberates from our eight islands and our 12,000 people to the international community. We are petitioning and demanding that global net zero be secured by mid-century, that 1.5 degrees be kept within reach, that urgently needed climate finance be mobilized to address loss and damage, and that there be greater accountability from all nations and peoples to act as good stewards of the earth. But we are also not going to wait for the world to get its act together. We are looking to the future and preparing now for the worst case scenario where our lands disappear and our people must leave. We will not stand idly by as the water rises around us. We are not just talking in Tuvalu, we are mobilizing collective action at home, in our region and on the international stage to secure our future. On the national level, we are pursuing bold legal avenues to ensure that Tuvalu's existing maritime boundaries will remain intact and we will be recognized as sovereign even if our land territory is lost to climate change. We are also rapidly adopting innovative digital tools and platforms to build a digital nation. New digitized systems will allow us to continue to fully function as a sovereign state regardless of land loss or relocation. At the regional level, we see the tremendous importance of platforms like the Pacific Climate Change Migration and Human Security Program and the Joint Working Group on Climate-Related Mobility, co-chaired by Tuvalu and Fiji. These platforms will provide Pacific-led arrangements to support climate-related migration that are informed by our unique cultures, values and ways of life. Outside of our Pacific family, our global family is still critical to us and we will not give up on COP. We will continue to promote our value of kaitasi, which refers to our shared responsibility to act in the best interest of the global community, and also the value of falepili, which represents our duty to act as good neighbors to all nations and peoples. We all have a responsibility at COP26 to address climate change and ensure that climate mobility, at whatever scale, takes center stage. In Tuvalu, we are living the realities of climate change and sea level rise as you stand watching me today at COP26. We cannot wait for speeches when the sea is rising around us all the time. Climate mobility must come to the forefront. We must take bold, alternative action today to secure tomorrow. Tuvalu Modetua.